off market where each fortnight we are chewing the fat about the Perth property market. What's hot, what's not, and what's confusing people about property in Perth. Ross, Shane, welcome back. We're back. We've made it Thanks to Jess. episode four. What have Go you learnt so far? Um, that we look good on camera. Um, That's just how quickly the week flies. Yeah. I know, eight weeks. Unbelievable. Yeah. And the pressure you put on us to come up with all this great Hard-hitting journalism. Yeah, bang, bang, bang all the time. But we, we deliver, mate, don't we? We try. We try. All we right, try. it's your turn again. My turn. Under again. the hammer. Under every the week. Hammer. Quick pulse check on the market. What have you been seeing? Unbelievable results. Um, and in particular, a couple of areas that aren't necessarily traditional in the auction world, which I think is important to report on this week. Um, Cash was here the other week and it's not necessarily in the auction world. Um, great auction in Lath Lane on, on uh, the weekend, which mm -hmm. uh, got a fantastic result. Four bidders, big crowd, so that area. You know, people say auctions aren't here, but well and truly great result. And we had another one for um, Hughes' office in uh, Manning for Paul Delanzo. And um, Manning's not necessarily probably mm. a, a great auction precinct. Um, once again, good product, well-managed auction campaign, um, sold under the hammer. So, you know, great. Is that things. a unique sort of property? To not really. The one that Paul was um, selling was a brand new um, townhouse. Yeah. Yeah, nice product, yep. well built. Um, but, you know. Um, the process. Just, just the process. And the one in Lath Lane was probably 1940s, 1950s mm. home, but it was more of a, uh, a building block, if anything. So. Yep. Um, you know, they're both very different yeah. products that attracted a very different crowd. And the other one is, you know, we've seen auctions that haven't sold. The results have come very close to the auction. Mm -hmm. So, um, fantastic. Hey, do you talk to many other auctioneers around Perth? I know Kim Finlay, obviously, he's, a, he's an auction agent who yeah. sells in that area. Yeah, yeah. Do you, have you heard no, from anyone look, about... No, it's a good question, Jess, because I, it's something that I think in Perth is actually missing in the auction arena is is some sort of auctioneer's um, form of communication to report results every week yeah. um, and maybe to get together on a reasonably regular basis, much, once a quarter, what's happening and so forth. It's, it's really quite disenfranchised. Mm -hmm. um, I personally, for the auctioneers that do see this, I'd, I'd, I'd love to get together yeah. and even every week we report our results to a central point. I'd be happy to collate that information and put it out to the social media, give it to the West and you know, get it out there, what's mm -hmm. going on. Because what's missing is is that collective that people aren't seeing what's going on. It's you no know, auctions I mm. might do or Kim does or Tom Ezzy does and it's just very siloed mm -hmm. and I think it'd be fantastic yeah. to get together. All yeah. right, that's a good project. You also see, like, if you get the reports that come, I think Josh Vegan sends out the weekly reports. WA is the only one missing. Yeah. 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 That'd be the, even better just to have the sales agents as well for that mm. to flow down, not just the auctioneers, mm. but yeah. the sales agents who are very pro-auction mm. yeah. to be able to get together yeah. and go over, I mean, you know, the... The, the bits and pieces I, that they I mean, have week I'd to week. I'd be really happy to put my time into that. Um, and Sean used to do a lot of auctions. There you go. <laughs> all right, well, that's a new project for you all. Used to. <laughs> 2020 Sorry, goals, mate. number one. Pardon? 2020 goals, number one. Don't invite, if you invite me this week to a Facebook page saying auctioneers are us or something. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Closed group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. That that's it, done. <laughs> Um, all right, straight into real press. Yep. Ending on a good note there. Now, this is where we take a look at a property story that we have seen in the media and we decipher what it might mean for you guys. So this week we've got a couple of things to cover off. The first that I wanted to touch on was something you mentioned, uh, Shane, last week. Yep. There was an article in the Fin Review about um, rental prices in the, and the different places in the country mm. where it's actually cheaper to buy than rent. Yep. Um, now, the article said, according to data from CoreLogic, in 37.8% of Perth, mm -hmm housing markets, the rents are higher than the average cost of a mortgage. Yep. In Sydney... Yeah, it's about 3%, I think. Yeah, 3%. Which is, yeah. Really. I think, and that's why I say, when you hear on the radio, they're sort of trying to beat the drum that agents are always got their hand out of the property industry. But we're actually telling the truth to say, in many circumstances across Perth, and I personally think it'd probably be higher than that. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are a rep in a certain area, we'd love to get your feedback if that's the case in your suburb. Yeah. Um, because buyers should be aware that they will be getting a tap on the shoulder sooner or later that the rents are going up. Yeah. yeah. So with interest rates obviously being so low, it is a really good opportunity. Mm -hmm. you know? um, yeah. In Sydney, they don't have the luxury of that, I'm going to show no, you. No, absolutely not. So. And I'll just clarify that by saying in the article, it said that that was based on a 20% deposit mm. and 4.35% variable yeah, which you probably rate, yeah. which is pretty standard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. okay. Um, 
Beautiful. Second article, quickly, is some news coming out of Coburn. Roscoe, you you sent this one through. Yeah. Um, regarding the uh, Coburn Bridge, which broke ground, they broke ground this week, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And um, and the Wave Park. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to wanted to talk about good yeah, news look, for local real estate. Uh, look, I think it's it's great news not only for real estate, but also great news economically. You know, these mm. sort of infrastructural projects are really really important for the general economy, mm-hmm. for employment, um, and confidence. Mm-hmm. You know, like the 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 Coburn Bridge thing is, um, I think it's a two hundred million dollar um, project. So that's a great one. It obviously opens up that whole corridor. As Shane was saying mm. before, it's sort of in those areas it, it it allows people to get access to the city. Qu- you know, quicker than mm. if some people that live close to the city because it just gets you straight on the freeway, straight, on, yeah. straight onto the train lines and so forth. And and that's what we need, you know. Mm. So in those areas that have maybe suffered through the downturn, this sort of yeah. it just opens them up and gives that confidence that people say, yeah, okay, this thing's going on. And with Metronet coming on, it sort of, you know, it's all obviously links Thanks. into that whole Metronet thing as well. It just well. makes sense when you're tapping into infrastructure that's there. Yeah. The urban sprawl's great if it's not having to be I guess manufactured everything starting again, yeah. but a tap on that freeway and and as I was saying, like my sister sometimes to get to the city and I'm a lot closer, she'll get there before me because she's bang on straight there. Yeah, it's free run. People can get the train stations along there now. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes sense. How know. quickly can people who live in that area expect? Like, is that going to have a direct? 20, uh, by the end of 2021. But and um, will that have a direct effect on property prices? Do you think? Will they see well, those? I, I think so. I mean, yeah. Kalia, Kalia, I think it's Kalia Estate, which is just um, sort of where Banjo, the old Banjo, mm. that's been fantastic. Like that was hot because people were like a new home. Easy access, still, I don't know, probably 25 k's from the city or something. Mm. But they felt they had the convenience to get on there. So mm-hmm. that I personally, that estate, so even the, I sold a couple of the display homes there and they were like frothing over it. It was just like, when can I get in there? Yeah, Because right. they didn't want to wait for them to build. Yeah. So that's that's a pretty good, you know, and not many display homes have had that sort of frenzy over yeah, Perth. Right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so I think it will directly impact um, without a doubt having it easy access. Yeah. 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 And what about this wave park? They've moved it, Alfred Cove scrapped, <clears throat> yeah. moving it down. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. It's yep. quite what Lana thinks. Um, yeah. I think it's fantastic. She's got legs yeah, tied yeah. to North Perth. The old so. skate. <laughs> hidden agenda. <laughs> hidden agenda. <laughs> so no, I, I think it's fantastic because uh, I think having something like that on the water uh, for, I guess, blue chip suburbs, to me, <clears throat> didn't make a huge amount of sense. Mm-hmm. Um, please don't send hate mail. But <laughs> I'm just saying I didn't, I didn't think it made a lot of sense. But having it out there where you got it, people can tap into it, it's got access to the free, the train lines, um, schools, all those sorts of things, people are going to make it. A bit like, I guess, having Adventure World in mm. the city probably wouldn't make much sense. Yeah. So I think having an attraction out there, um, fantastic. Yeah, mm. look, I, I, I think so. I think, uh, you know, you read the article and it talks a lot about tourism. Mm. You know, people travel for those mm. type of things. The, the people building or potentially build if it, it comes out of the ground and the guys are just about to open the one in Tullamarine in Victoria, which has been road testing <coughs> for about the last three or four months. I think that comes on stream the next week or two. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and it has, I think, a different di- 11 different surf breaks happening at once. You know, if, you know, I mean, I'm talking like mm. a bit of a dude here, aren't I? You know? <laughs> I think, I think, we, I think yeah, it's like, I think across live town resident, yeah, yeah, yeah. all but surfing pro, the barrel rider himself, <laughs> the right. tube, the tube, tube meister, yeah. Mr. Sean Hughes. Do you I mean, Sean, what? I, yeah, I used oh to be state and, state and scholastic champ. Back yeah. Did you? Yeah. 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 So I used to surf a lot and then real estate I came mean, along. I mean, Sean, from you, from a, from a <laughs> surfing point of view, um, would you use something? I mean, you're obviously absolutely surfing. guaranteed. I think they're fantastic. You know, they've they've moved on from the the wave pools, which were more sort of a stationary wave, into actual surf spots. And yeah. so I think you'll see a lot more of that. You know, you look at Western Australia; we've got so much land, it's so big and sparse. Mm. Um, for us to not have one, I think it'd be a crime. So we've got so many great surfers. We've had people like Taj before. You know, Jack Robinson this week, West Australian guy, one in Hawaii. So you know, there's a lot of surfers here. We've got big issues with sharks in Western Australia at the Mm -hmm. moment. So you've got safety, you've got the space, it's affordable out Mm -hmm. there. And I think having a a distance isn't too bad. Like surfers are tuned up with having to drive to remote spots and spend four hours for the wind to be wrong and the waves to be no good and turn around and come home. So to be able to get guaranteed surf, I I think, and and a little bit of distance for that, it's not going to be an issue. So tourism, fantastic. You know, once again, great infrastructure, you know, Money's yeah. investing. Great investment. Yeah. Yeah. It just makes the world go round. Yeah. Interesting what the people that way think. 
yeah. live around it because obviously yeah. there was a big uproar where it was going in, up in, the, in the city there. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see what the, the locals think. I would have Possibly. thought they'd love it. Yeah, yeah, I would have thought a different yeah. response. Might might be Sean, the, first wanna... surf, must, the first surf shop that's out east. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not the first. <laughs> yeah. Not the first. Um, Sean, do you want to come on down? Sure. Come on down. Our, uh, so from the south to the north, we have today's guest is an expert in the northern beaches. You've lived and sold and surfed now yep. uh, in that coastal strip with your mum for, you, for your whole life. Yes. Um, Sean Hughes, Director and Licensee of Real Mark Coastal. Welcome. Thanks Welcome to Off us. Market. So tell us about your market. <laughs> Straight into it. How much time have you got, fella? Mm. We were going to focus on, I guess, Trig, but you guys sell in that whole northern strip. So um, whether or not you want to kind of tell us where the hotspots are amongst there or, 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 you know, what's going well, what's not. Yeah, certainly um, we're specialising in the coastal belt, if you will, in a bit of a price point, mum and I, and then all the sales guys are in and around off, off that. So um, there's been pockets within pockets that have been quite good at the moment. Certainly the top end of the market seems to be going relatively mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Roscoe would like to be calling more auctions for us, but <laughs> the, the guys that are running processes, they seem to be days on market are quite reasonable. There seems to be good buyer activity. You know, for a a suburb like Trigg, there's only 860 odd homes mm. and, and so it's surrounded by great infrastructure. You've got the Karen Up Shopping Centre um, that's all brand new and underway at the moment, which is good. You've got the Scarborough Foreshore that's undergone a great uh, redevelopment and then you've got good schools off the back of that as well. So aside from the lifestyle aspect of just being coastal, you have got a lot of other good things off the back of it that are um, changing and, and, and that sees a lot of demand for those areas. So there isn't a great deal of turnover and there is a good buy pool of people waiting to get into them. Mm. Um, and then we have a whole heap of people who are further north in say Hillary's etc and Sorrento who are looking to get further south because of the tra uh, travel time. So yeah. it's amazing how many parents that we have come through who the wife is just sick of travel time to, to school because yeah. it's not just the drop off and the pick up mm. it's everything else that goes <laughs> in between that as well so sometimes they're doing four or five trips to the school per what, day what are your key sc <coughs> schools coming up a lot mm. when, we're, when we're chatting about yep. the suburbs what are the kind of key schools around there that people are St Mary's Hale, um, you know, you've got Corrine from public school point of view. Um, Sorrent, well, you've got St Mark's and you've got Sacred Heart, which are a little bit further north. But mm -hmm. for, say, specific to Trigg, you'd see a lot of those students would go to Hale yep. and St Mary's. Yeah. Yep. And how much have you seen, we talked about, you've spoken about, obviously, Scarborough Foreshore, Karen Up's going up. Mm. That pocket was already... Um, you know, a highly regarded mm. pocket of Perth. Do mm. projects like that increase value again? Do they, you know, how does that affect um, in yeah, this kind of market? I, I think that they will in this yeah. market, definitely. It'll take some time in order to have a flow-on effect for all of that. But yeah, I would have thought um, Karen up as a suburb at the mm. moment will see some direct benefit. You know, the plans for the shopping centre are mm. absolutely amazing. Yeah. And, and you know, Roscoe and I were only talking about it the other day in regards to that the shopping centres now will be more of a destination. Mm. So in entertainment. In, in, in entertainment, you know, people will actually say I'm going to go to the shops for the day mm. and they'll go and have a drink at the bar they'll watch a movie they'll do some shopping and it'll actually be an experience mm -hmm. um, whereas you see a lot of the UK sort of stuff is all small little boutiques that do mm. so much um, deliveries um, online as opposed to here you know you'd be more like a Gold Coast you've got the pack fair mm. at the Gold Coast where you can literally go out and hang out for the whole day and it's mm -hmm. and it's an experience so yeah. Karen Up will be the first one like that I think which will be great yeah L and last sorry. week we spoke about, um, I guess, development happening through Subi with, with Nikki. Mm. Um, there's been a bit on Flora Terrace and that has it been well embraced, the higher density or? Um, it hasn't, it hasn't. Yeah. yeah, I think for that particular pocket on Flora Terrace, it's a bit of a pseudo commercial pocket. You know, that that whole coastal belt doesn't really have a great deal of, of commercial. Mm -hmm. So where we are now in Osmond Park is probably the closest. Mm -hmm. um, so... In those areas, I think it's quite it's quite handy and it's yeah. more well received because you've got the cafes and the restaurants and you've got the bit of the shopping centre scenario, mm -hmm. the shopping malls. Um, but um, when you go and plonk a big apartment of twenty yeah. or thirty apartments right smack bang in a residential area, um, there's definitely been a fair bit of blowback yeah. off that. You know, there's pockets in say Duncraig, for instance, at the back end of Duncraig, mm -hmm. where they've done a fair bit of of development um, in their high res stuff, and you've got. You know, in cul-de-sac 
streets where there's not a great deal of parking as it is. All mm. of a sudden, you've got 20 apartments that go in there. Yeah. So you've got 40 cars plus that all have to park there. Not all of them have two car bays. Mm. And then you've got 20 bins on the street additional. Yeah. And, it, you know, so I think they'd really need to be careful of the planning in regards to the congestion. And that's what residents seem to kick up about. Well, you it, look at Yellow Cafe and, kind of, like, that's... The kick up around <laughs> the yeah. parking. Yeah. Sorry, is that a the most controversial oh, cafe yeah. on the planet? <laughs> Just, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, mainly so because there are some really well healed, um, well connected residents in there who are very against it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah very against it. Yes. I think as Sean said though, Jess, the whole thing's got to be managed well. And I think if you, you jump over the other side of the river and you go across to Apple Cross Mount Pleasant, what they're doing there, mm. you know, you can see them here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like if there's four or five mm. that I can think of, and you mm. know, they're probably 25, 30 levels and more. And, and you just question mm. how that's going to impact on congestion and so forth. And they're all literally across the road from mm. each other. Yeah. And you just question how well it's been managed. And then you go back into Apple Cross Mount mm. Pleasant. They've got all these three, four, five level yeah. type things, which is happening in the Netherlands at the moment, which you know, one of our ladies got sort of in the crossfire of, <laughs> of some controversy around that. Yeah, so... <laughs> Good on you, Lana. Good on you, love. Classic. But, and, and hopefully in the, they... They learn from all these, and mm -hmm. the coastal strip, the coastal strip in particular, is very precious. Yeah, well, they really, do. But you know. th those types of areas do have lots of very vocal, vocal local. I said it again. Yeah. Residents who yeah. have been there for a long time have a certain expectation of a quiet street and a quiet. I mean, and and places like Yellow Cafe or um, or North Street Deli in Swanbourne, mm -hmm. they attract a crowd, and all of a sudden, the local residents there. Yeah. They're, you know, they've got cars parked on their verge. The dogs and complaining yeah. about the You know, the dogs are pooing on the lawn and, <laughs> you know, like it's Crazy. progress yeah. versus... Exactly. And there's always going to be change. It's how they handle that. You yeah. know, I, I think about even, say, for Scarborough, uh, you look at the Three Ocean site and mm -hmm. what they were going to do there. It looked like a Dubai thing. It yeah. was amazing. And then they had so much... Um, government give back that they were giving. They had the 400 car bays. Mm. They had the art museum right at the top. They had the bridge that connected over Scarborough Beach Road there on West Coast Highway. Um, all of those things that gave to the community off the back of them being able to build that. And mm. unfortunately, that's been knocked mm. at the moment. There were a lot of debate at that time from residents on Save Our Sunset came out again. And, you know, it just is progress. And you look at something like that, which I think would be really futuristic and fantastic mm. for Perth, um, mm. for tourism and everyone comes in and goes, wow, puts us mm. on the map. Yeah. <laughs> and now what you'll probably end up with is just a, a block of shitty looking apartments mm. that, mm. you know, I just think what a shame. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Good discussion, guys. Mm. Thank you. That's um, what we do, Jess. I know. That's, yeah. why, yeah, that's why we pay you the big bucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I the big bucks. Let's <laughs> go. Yeah. Yes. It's okay. your turn. Here's he. We oh, have God. some really important questions for you. Wow. Okay. Now, I haven't known this guy long. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I like the first one, Jess. Husey, yep. we have six really important questions to ask you. Oh, you have God. to be honest. Right. Okay. Okay. We, won't we, we chucked him under the bus last week. That felt good. Can we ask <laughs> what happened last week? What was the actual... Oh, oh the... Oh, the oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. <laughs> 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 well, I, I can't remember. It was something about his fiance putting their, their own rental I drove past on. the place and she was putting the sign. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Started showing there was yeah, twelve yeah. people on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Perhaps she's just quite a good salesperson. Yeah, yeah. You should learn from her. She's yeah. leased it now, so yeah. oh, good, it's good. <laughs> okay, first question, Sean. We all the old saying is we learn from our mistakes. Mm -hmm. What would you consider to be your biggest stuff up that you've learned from? Wow. Um, oh, when I was <laughs> when I was much younger, I was doing a, a final inspection, and a, a, the buyer. I've got the buyer in the cellar there, and I'm dressed up in my suit that didn't fit me, and I had my duck tie on. I thought I was killing it, and, and I'm out the back, and and. Um, the guy asked me if it was solar panels on the roof or not, and I've sort of stepped back to have a bit of a look because I didn't know, and I fell in the pool <laughs> at the final inspection. And the learning from that is? Have a spare set of clothes yeah. in the car. <laughs> exactly. Okay, number two, what are three things you won't leave home without? Oh, the money maker for starters, the phone. The phone. Never. Never. I'm naked without that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, a pocket square. 
I never yeah. leave home without a pocket yeah. square. Yeah, you've been the homie with yeah. the pocket square, aren't you? I don't mind that. <laughs> Until I roll up with mine, which is a little bit more glam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, third one. Well, I don't know. Oh, a pen. Oh, I'll always have a pen on me. Yeah, good. Yep. Do you okay. ever consider wearing a cravat? <laughs> <laughs> Matt? <laughs> I think it's suiting. Would well, yeah, yeah, you'd have yeah. matching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, Sean, I, I, I ask this question, but I ask it with some sort of um, hesitation because it probably doesn't apply. But what would be your worst habit? You've only got good habits, I assume. Oh, but what would be your worst habit. one? Work related. Or do we need to bring Sarah in for this one? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, probably de- like um, maybe just deplugging. I would say definitely really hard to properly unplug and and just completely take oh. my mind off off things when I'm when I'm away and overseas and I don't have the phone on me and stuff like that. That's the best time for me mm. to be able to actually properly do that. Yeah. But um, being on the go all the time, even when you sleep, I can wake up in the morning and I feel like I've been at the office for four hours or five hours. Yeah. You know, so yeah, yeah. Um, that's probably the the big one. I would yeah. say cool. The partners okay. suffer a bit. But... Partners do. Yeah, definitely. Yep, not being able to not switch just off. Of that. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, you know, that, I reckon that's a big thing. They, mm. they, they do definitely. And not being present for them is a big thing as well. If your mind's always on the go, you're always thinking about that person that you've got to call and that thing that yeah. you've got to do, etc. cetera. Um, definitely having like a, a recordable dictaphone is, is quite good for me. I find if I get it out of my head, then I'm, my head's not racing as much yeah, yeah. so but um yeah certainly for other partners it's hard when you're playing second fiddle a yeah. lot of the time to to work yeah when you go to a restaurant with sarah and you're having a meal where's your phone you're yeah, definitely on the table still i haven't learned no no, no. Mate. i know rule from an old fella Ditch yeah. the phone at rest- at restaurants <laughs> okay when you're not at work where are you most likely to be where would we find you the golf club beating your scores all the time. Oh my God, <laughs> what a liar. <laughs> um, no, if I'm not there, I'll be anything on the water, you know, coastal stuff. So yeah. surfing and, and I don't mind playing playing golf a little bit. Um, but Sean, have you ever played 18 holes or nine's about your capacity? Uh, uh, yeah, it? nine's my capacity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when you're a busy person, I know you're semi-retired uh, and, you know, you've got lots of time on your hands. So <laughs> you can play 18 holes all the time. So, mate, you remember of Karen up, uh, as he says, the country club. Um, <laughs> Sean, you would have probably the most expensive rate per hold on the per hole on the planet with your fees and the little you play there. <laughs> the lack thereof. <laughs> the lack thereof. <laughs> I mean, you've got to, I mean, you are a busy guy and you know, you, it's hard to unplug. I mean, you've got your boat and stuff. That must be a really good decompression chamber for yeah. you. Yeah, yep, definitely. I think um, there's a peacefulness about just being on the water, yeah. I think, sometimes. Even if I'm working, if I'm doing calls off the back of the boat yeah. or something like that, yeah. it just, it's a good spot to do it, but it just feels more relaxing for me. So. Surely there's a more juicy habit than that, though. Hey? Surely there's a better habit than that, though. <laughs> <laughs> So hear that laugh? Yeah, that means yes, yeah, yeah, but he's yeah. not going to tell you a laugh. <laughs> he's been media trained. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's too good for that. Okay, Sean, we all every we hear sayings. Some we like, some we don't. People use some sayings ad nauseum that drive us mad. What's the say, What's the most overused saying out there that does your head in? Oh, oh, the latest one I've been hearing is adapt or die. Adapt or die. Yeah, I've been he- yeah. over hearing that a lot at the moment. <laughs> Just maybe a message getting in there at all. But, um, yeah, I think a lot of people do know that they just, yeah. you know, you just got to move with the times. Yeah. You got to change. You got to reinvent yourself all the time. So that's yeah. pretty, pretty obvious. Yeah. yeah. I guess, Adapt or die. I, I guess. There goes the next subject. Yeah. Yeah. What are you listening yeah. to? I have yeah. heard yeah. this yeah. one. If, if they think they have to adapt, that means they're dead. Yeah. Yeah. What's the one you say? Too um, much. What do I say too much? Sweet. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind saying sweet. 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 Frothing, I use it. When I heard yeah. you say frothing before, I used that a bit. Yeah. Frothing. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Nothing <laughs> with a froth. Yeah. Last question, mate. And, and Shane and I actually think, see, Jess took this out of the questions, but we've, we've taken our, our diva control, put it back in. We think this is the most you important. You just rave question. on. Oh. Not a problem. <laughs> This man sure. wears a cravat. He yeah, can he this a, question. Fact, if he had the cravat on, he could answer this question yeah. well. Sean, where is where is the best meal in Perth? Best restaurant, best meal. 
Oh, I took some of my guys to um, Bricker the other night. So oh. we took them out to the Elton John concert mm-hmm. and we went and ate at Bricker before. It was absolutely That's packed. That's in your book. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, it was really good. It's I good. think um, the owner is Danny Passaris' son, Simon, oh, okay. owns it. Yeah. And the food was unbelievable. Service was really good, but they were packed. Packed. Yeah. So oh. Go-to? What's the go-to? Uh, locally. No, what's, what's the, the actual go-to meal there? Oh, the meal, the lamb. The lamb yeah. shoulder. Oh, the lamb that. shoulder. Mm. Really and locally, good. what's your best? Um, Clark's Restaurant, if you like fine dining. The chef there used to cook for the Queen, so that's sort of intimate fine dining. Mm. But if you want just a quick, easy meal, like if I'm running home late from work and Sarah hasn't cooked or something like that, five, canteen is pretty five-ish. good at about five, yeah. <laughs> Leave the office at four. <laughs> <laughs> First dinner at home at five. <laughs> he's, home, bo- home, he's bulking up. Second dinner. He's getting ready for competition. <laughs> yeah. Good answers. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you done? I'm done. Oh, beautiful. Well yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, good. So good. you, mate. Yeah, well done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. All right, guys, final segment, play of the week. You were our play of the week last week, Sean. Well, yeah. Mm. We were like. uh, <laughs> our, I was. Um, anyone got a play of the week to share? <sighs> I think Shane's got, I think Shane's got a couple he'd love to talk about. Well, I actually went to the Rewa cocktail party last night um, and I got on a bus. I don't know how I ended up on a bus, but I don't know what company it was, but they dance. That's, uh, that's Do they I dance got. well? Or? They just dance lots. They dance well, lots. they're very erosive, yeah. Shane, like. Look, it was all a blur, but... Yeah. Were there any poles on the bus? There was a pole on the bus. Pole, right? Several okay. poles on the bus. Okay. Several okay. poles. There's a pole on the It's actually dancing. the only bus I've ever been on. That we went soldier stuff. I was like, I'm looking at the other side so of the bus. <laughs> I don't know, like, normally you get in a bus just like a, that way. But... It's a party bus. Well, yeah. it's been so a long time since I was on a party bus. <laughs> but, These uh, yeah, cocktail really good. parties, I tell you what, and the other one, I think, um, I think the, on the driving south, the Coburn Council, mm. talking oh, about yes. who the sign, what they want it to go up to replace that, the creepy oh, that faces. That face, those creepy I'd faces. I'd love to get some feedback from what people think should be on there. You know what those faces were, though, don't you? We nominated no, Tony Galati's face. They weren't real people. Those faces... It was a were, combo. Were a montage of all a whole heap of photos of people that oh, no lived, in, lived in, the area, in the area, and they yeah. created these faces from all these photos of oh, people. They did. Area. They did yeah. say we thought it was a great idea, and then the execution. We've had. We haven't had great feedback over the years because they mm. are weird. Took them a while. So to you get you them thinking you get your face? Yeah. Up there. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Is that what you're thinking? We nominated right. Shane and Tony Galati. Yeah. I've got bigger yeah. eyebrows than Tony. <laughs> 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 All right. Oh, right. Oh, yes, move on. I'm um, sorry. Going. Yes. Uh, last last play of the week, wanted to nominate Livia Porteous. Everyone mm. saw in the paper a couple of weeks ago. Um, she sold a property in Peppermint Grove off market before it hit the market for over nine mil. Yeah, well, so, not sensational a bad property. I'd say that's a sensational property. You guys did the video for that, is it right? We did do the video for yes. that. Yes. In fact, good. if you look at some statistics, there are quite a number of sales that have mm. been going on around there in those sort of that sort of territory lately. Yeah, right. And, and Roscoe, nine. do you reckon that that's a sign of the market on the way, on the change? Mate, I do. Look, we mentioned last week or the other week, Sean, that um, like Peppermint Grove's gone from a medium average price this year from 3.4 to 4 million. Mm. Um, and a lot of those sort of sales. So, yeah, the economy start from the top. Yep. A lot of confidence there. A lot of, like this, I know of probably half a dozen transactions that have taken place in the last sort of few weeks or last month of 8, 9, 10, 12, mm. 13 million. Yeah. Um, you know, I see the blocks. Smart money. Yeah, you see the blocks coming back on from the, um, the Taj. Yeah. yeah. The guy's building his. Mm. And yeah. And then he's selling the two front ones. They've got uh, some know, confidence. And they, they'll, they'll be probably <clears> five thousands. Uh, five six thousand square meter, um, right? And they'll go pretty quick. So, so maybe that dovetails in with you. You know how we were saying the other day in regards to the mining, like Caratha and all that, yeah. starting to go through a bit of a boom, and yeah, they've yeah, been yeah. having, you know, real real vacancies in rents, prices increasing, yeah. hard to get stuff. Yeah. So from the outside in, and yeah. then obviously the to- internally yeah. the top end of the market starting yeah. to move. It might be all well, on if the you change. Look at all the dots, you look at all those dots. You look at what Shane mm. was saying about affordability at the other end of the market, where it's cheaper to buy in a lot of areas than it is to to rent the same property, you see some of the results that you've been seeing off market, mm, you know, yeah. um, and all these things, you start to look at it across the board. Um, it's much, you know, much more positive. Mate, mm. I'm, look, I know I'm an eternal optimist, but I've got to say, I'm very optimistic mm. about where we're heading. You know, we don't want to see any great boom, but we want to see steady, sustainable, steady sustainable progress. And, and I really believe it's there. But, you know, and the thing is too, I think we've all got a responsibility to, to talk in the positive, mm. not in a stupid way, but, you know, to be confident because mm. the next person we talk to, but then talk to somebody else in a confident way. I'm mm. just sick and tired of people 
been in that doom and gloom, my girl, mm. my guy. Look what's happening in Melbourne. Look what's mm. happening in Sydney. We don't live in Melbourne. We don't live in Sydney. We live in Perth. Mm. Yep. Let's be confident about where we live. And you know, confidence is such an important thing. If, mm. And it's an infectious thing as well, well isn't it? It is. And I, I just think we've, we've all got to actually take that on board and go, no, we're marching forward. We're doing good things. And you know, we talk about the wave parks. We talk about the bridges in Coburn's. We talk about all these different things. Optus Stadium. Optus Stadium. Yeah, you, just... you look at... Yeah, and you go, my God, just embrace it and, yeah. and just believe that we're moving forward. And Amen. We will. Oh, Amen. Pre-trust. Brothers and sisters. Mm. Here, here. <laughs> what a way to end the show. Yeah. Sunday, Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is it cool, from cool. us today. Uh, another big thank you That's to sweet, the mate. team at Domain Hire and Property Styling. This, Thanks, guys. We, did you notice our coastal oh, yeah, theme see? just yeah. for you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the girls do a beautiful job. Our Just see Husey's house there. <laughs> there on the that point. rock on the <laughs> rock there. <laughs> um, so our next episode is going to be the very last of the year. We're doing a Christmas special. We have a Mandra expert, Mandra, Mandra specialist coming on to tell us all about the market down there because, again, very different. Theo, Theo Alexandru, and I apologise if I've said his name wrong from Harcourt's. Mandra is going to be coming on. I think if Theo's coming, obviously he's Greek. I think he has to bring Greek food. Talking mm. about brick oh, Big lamb shoulder. Some lamb yeah. shoulder. <laughs> lamb <laughs> shoulder, a bit of tzatziki, mm. a bit, yeah, a bit of dolmitas. <laughs> hey, <what? laughs> right. You obviously ran it That's why someone goes to brick at once, they speak yeah. fluent Greek. <laughs> <laughs> If you like the show, share it with your family and friends, and we will see you back here same time, same place, two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.